Well, good morning. Welcome to, I hope you slept well. Welcome to the Breakfast Biscuit for Thursday, March the 30th, 2023 at 6.05 a.m. And this morning's title is Maybe Half the Time. Maybe Half the Time from 1 Corinthians 13. This morning it is 59 degrees. I love that. Uh, on the way to 76 degrees with a chance of rain and some pretty uh, stout south winds, I think, later in the day today. So with that being said, let me remind you again, SeaTex Church, my favorite church in the whole wide world, is going to be back at the Elegante Hotel uh, this week at 10 a.m. for our last service before Easter. It's Palm Sunday. And please join me. I've worked hard to try to uh, give you uh, the cliff notes, if you will, theologically, on why the crucifixion. Uh, this uh, message will not be so much about the logistics and the gore of the crucifixion, but about the theological reasons uh, for the crucifixion. I think that it will be a blessing to you. It's been a blessing to me to put it together, so join me for that. And then if you don't mind, uh, do me a favor and do the kingdom a favor and hit the like button and the follow button and the share button or whatever you call it uh, there on your apparatus. Uh, and let's see if we can't share a little love and scripture and prayer time together early in the morning uh, with the rest of Southeast Texas. So off we go. Uh, the title is maybe half the time from 1 Corinthians uh, 13. I did a beautiful wedding Saturday, and I'm not talking about my part of it, but just the whole experience, the decorations, the people, the the conduct, the, the orderliness of it all, the beauty of it. It's a great young couple. I really love them a lot. They're got a great future together, and I, I thoroughly enjoyed uh, the rehearsal uh, and the wedding, and I did the same old vows. You know why? Because those vows are important, they're scriptural, and it includes the fact that God's plan is for one man who remains a man, one woman who remains a woman, and one lifetime together. And what God joined together, let not man Put asunder. <clears throat> and the vows that I use, I actually uh, use more than one set. We kind of do it in three stages. Uh, but the major part of those vows uh, says this, and I quote, with this and other biblical directions, Andrew, do you take Kelsey to be your wedded wife, to live together after God's ordinance in the holy estate of matrimony? Do you promise to love her, comfort her, honor and keep her in sickness and in health? And forsaking all others, keep only to her till death do you part. And then naturally the groom uh, would say, I do. Those same vows uh, back to the bride. And, and before we're finished, it says all those things that you hear and remember from a wedding, uh, for better, for worse, for richer, for poor, in sickness and in health, forsaking all others, cleaving only unto her or him till death do us part. Did you notice that it, it gives both ends of the spectrum better for worse, for richer, for poor, in sickness and in health? What do you hope for? You hope for all the good stuff. What do you do if you don't get all the good stuff and it's poorer instead of richer and in sickness instead of health? What do you do? Well, let me share with you what the scripture says that we do. Speaking of Christian love, now there's boy-girl love, that's called eros love. There's brother-to-brother, -brother, brotherly love called philos, philos love. Uh, and then there's agapao or agape Christian love. And marriages start many times, uh, most times I would say, on eros love. But do you know what sustains them? Agapao, agape Christian love. Why? Because Christian love is an unflinching, unwavering commitment to the welfare of someone else at your own expense. And the Bible describes it like this here. Love is patient. Love is kind. It is not jealous. Love does not brag and is not arrogant. It does not act unbecomingly. It does not seek its own. It is not provoked. It does not take into account a wrong suffered. I actually like the translation better. It keeps no record of wrongs. It does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. So, 
Now, what are we telling the bride and the groom? We're telling them that there are going to be some good days and some bad days, some fun days and some not so fun days. And, uh, you know, it kind of averages out to half and half, but some people get more than their share or more than their half of the good stuff. Some people get more than their share of the bad stuff. What's going to sustain it, whichever the ratio is? An unflinching, unwavering commitment to the welfare of someone else at your own expense. When we get through with the wedding, we always pray for happy, healthy lives. We just do. There's nothing wrong with that. It's a common expectation. But let me remind you what love really looks like, and it doesn't come from a wedding. Love really looks like God commending or demonstrating his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And then this one has really been on my mind a lot. I don't remember where I saw it recently, but it's an amazing clarifier of thought. Think about this. Paul entered heaven to the cheers of those that he had martyred. And that's love. Let me pray for you. Father, help us this morning to realize that love is not a warm, fuzzy set of emotions. It is a commitment modeled after that commitment of yours through Christ on the cross. Father, I ask you today to help us behave on the basis of who we are in Christ. And God, help us to love like you love. And God, we pray that we would be willing to do that at our own expense. Forgive us for our sins, our shortcomings, our failures, all those things. And God, we pray that our lives would glorify you and be a blessing to your people. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. So may the Lord bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. And remember, as always, I love you. I'm praying for you. And I'll see you right back here bright and early tomorrow morning on Friday. God bless you.